Now we want to start uh, uh, afternoon session, evening session uh, in, in the third day. So the uh, first speaker of uh, this session is Ho Chun Chen. The title of this topic is uh, talk is error exponents and strong compass for uh, quantum total covering. This is joint work with uh, Li Gao. Uh, please start. Okay, thank you very much, Hayashi-san. Uh, and I would like to thank the organizer for holding this Beyond IAD conference. It's the 10th year. Okay, I'm Hao Zhongzhen from National Taiwan University. And this is joint work with Li Gao from the University of Houston. And our paper can be found on archive. Okay, uh, let me jump into the problem formulation of quantum soft covering directly. Okay, we consider a classical quantum channel which takes a classical symbol X to output a density operator on some Hilbert space B. Here we don't put any assumptions on this Hilbert space B. Okay, given an input distribution, probability distribution PX, and the output uh, state is the average of the density operators. Uh, let's denote this as rho B. Uh, but sometimes we don't have the mathematical descriptions of the channel and also the input distributions. So the question we want to ask is, how well can we approximate this rho B at the channel output state induced by the probability in distribution Px by crewing to the channel? Meaning that uh, you can take some x as input and send through the channel and you'll get some output, but how can you approximate this average state very well? Okay, and a standard approach is to use a random code book, uh, which contains M equiprobable code words, and uh, uh, where each code word uh, is pairwise independently drawn from some probability distribution, say Px. Then uh, we send these code words through a channel. So at the channel output, uh, we just make, make a mixture of those uh, density operators, and uh, we call this the uh, code book induced output is density, uh, rho b so c, this c is the, uh, the code book, uh, given the code book, it's, it is a mixture. So uh, given hm, which is the size of the code book, then we want to ask how close is rho b, uh, this code rho b sub c, the code book induced output density to the desired true marginal uh, density rho b. That's the question we want to ask. And to measure the closeness, we consider the trace distance as the error criterion, which is defined by this. And because this rho b given c is itself a random variable, because of the, we consider random code books, so c is random, it's also random variable con con containing uh, m random co code words. So uh, we would like to take expectation. Then our question becomes that for each code book size m, then how small or how large is the expected trace distance, where this expectation is taken with respect to the random code book. Okay, uh, we call this problem the one-shot quantum soft covering. And by the one-shot, we mean we, because we do not impose any specific structures on the channel, uh, except, for, except for this uh, classical quantum channel. Okay, this is the one-shot setting. Next, let's move on to the memory list asymptotic setting. Here, uh, we consider the product channel of the classical quantum channels, which takes n length symbols to uh, the product of each density operators. And in the n shot setting, uh, we consider two cases of the input distributions because right now, right now the input alphabet is n fold. The first one is the IID input. So just the tensor product of Px. Then, the corresponding output uh, is also just a product state, rho b tensor n. Okay, by sampling from this IID input distribution, we call this uh, the IID random code book because uh, each code word is sampled from this IID input distributions. And also we obtain this uh, IID random code book induced uh, density at the output uh, where uh, we put n everywhere because it's an n sharp case. Okay, then uh, oh, uh, here and the so copy size in the n sharp case is uh, has this rate r. Then uh, we want to ask how fast 
does this code book, uh, random ID random code book induced density converge to the true uh, Robbie tensor N in the bracket lens N? So that's our questions. Okay, and we will consider the second uh, input distribution, input distribution, which is the constant composition input distribution. Uh, this is a uniform input distribution on a sequence of Xn who's, uh, in, uh, who has empirical distribution as the same as this Px. And then the output, the corresponding output distribution is Robby N, and this is no longer a tensor product state. And we put this accent here to denote it is a cost, uh, constant composition input dispute. A minute. It stops. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, give me a second. Uh, my slides stop sharing, so let me let me share my slides again. Okay, sorry for the maybe some technical issues. Okay, so uh, is it over now? Okay. Uh, we oh. don't see the slides. Oh, uh, okay, you don't see the slides. Okay. Let me show it again. Sorry, there must be some problems. How about now? No? Not yet. Not yet. I don't know what happened. No? No? Okay, let me share again. Are you doing share desktop? Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry, we, we still don't see it. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, maybe some problem. So maybe you can send uh, uh, your presentation file to me, so then I can open each of you. Okay, so uh, let me let me just uh, log out and log in again to see if you go in again. Uh, Okay, good. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let me let me uh, continue. Okay, so we are talking about the like, constant composition codes, and then it's not uh, tensor products again, but uh, we can also consider those uh, a true uh, density output, and then we will use such constant composition input. Uh, we call this the constant composition random code books, and then we will get a. Uh, this constant composition random code book induced output densities. And again, we want to ask for each uh, code book size rate, and then how fast does this uh, code book induced state converge to the true uh, output state? But now this is not tensor product again. Okay, so let me give some uh, brief uh, literature review. Okay, so this problem was first studied by uh, by Weiner in a classical case, and he, he called this the, the soft covering in a classical setting. And then uh, Han and Verdu uh, uh, also studied this problem, but they used the, the optimal code book. They call this the channel reservability. And the soft covering is an achievability for channel reservability. They show that uh, when the rate of the code book size is larger than the mutual information, then they show that the expected the total variation distance will vanish exponential, uh, vanish asymptotically, not exponentially. And they also provide a weak converse for, for some spatial. Uh, they consider the channel with four rank, uh, they consider it four rank channels. Okay, so that they call this, they study this approximation of output statistics. So that's why. Uh, they consider these problems. Since then, there are many applications of the soft covering afterwards, but they are all classical uh, information theory works. And as for the one shot case, I want to remark that uh, Hayashi some proposed a uh, one shot of ach achievability bond. So an exponential convergence of the total variation distance in the classical case was obtained for rate larger than mutual information. Later, uh, Kauf uh, improved the achievable error exponent a bit by modifying uh, Hayashi's one-shot bound. And then Yagli and Kauf uh, 
they obtain the optimal error exponent for both the IID learning code books and constant composition learning code books. Basically, they use meta of types and a meta in, in this paper. Okay, and Yasai in ISIT two years ago, he obtained exact uh, polynomial prefactors. And for achievability, he also based on this uh, the one shot achievability bond proposed by Hayashi. So means meaning that this bond is actually very, very strong. Okay, and actually there are very uh, many distance measures being considered uh, relative entropy. There are many uh, works consider this and rainy divergences and uh, what's the distance and there's an E-gamma metric proposed by the Princeton group. Okay, and for rate uh, smaller than mutual information, uh, Watanabe and Hayashi-san obtained a strong converse property for res channel reservability and also second order rate, some ex exponential strong converse with certain symmetry assumptions on the classical channel and Kauf also obtained a second order rate with some probabilistic argument. As for quantum, uh, this soft covering problem was first studied by us with and wind winter. They, uh, they obtained this probability deviation bound, they call the operator churn of bound. Well, they also want to, to estimate the closeness between this cobalt induced density and a true density. And here they consider the matrix order. So essentially they consider the infinity known as the error criterion in this operator churn of bound. Hayashi-san also uh, studied the this case in using quantum relative entropy. And in this work, in this work we consider the uniform mixture at the channel output. And in this work, uh, Hayashi-san consider that they can put different weights on the on cohorts. And I will uh, refer the, the audience to Hayashi's book in the section nine for, for this uh, uh, quantum studies on this soft, soft covering problems. Okay, so there have been many distance measures being used. But so why do we consider a trace distance? So basically, especially because of the whole level Hellstone theorem, we would like the cobook induced density to be physically indistinguishable from the true will be. So that's our motivation. Also, if you use other norms, I it's the error criterion, but when you get back to the trace distance, there will be some dimension factor come out. So you can also use the operator train of bond by uh, as with winter, but that is infinity known. You will get a dimension factor. And when you use quantum relative entropy as the error criterion, then if you use the Pinsky inequality to get back to a trace distance, then the bond will not be uh, very tight. So that's why we, in this work, we directly analyze the trace distance uh, for this self covering. Okay, let's go to our results. We first introduced two quantum rainy divergences. Uh, the first one is the sandwich rainy divergence. That's a well-known information quantity, and it can be written as this as this shortened alpha norm. And the second one is the pets rainy divergence. And for any input distribution and the CQ channel, we define a joint state as this. Then we can define two quantities, the sandwich rainy information as this one, uh, where we minimize the second argument, sigma b here, and also a, a, a slightly different quantity we call the Augustin information, where we want to compute the average of the uh, sandwich rainy divergence this between the output and sigma b. Also consider the variant pet rainy information, Augustin information, where we do not minimize the second argument. Uh, you may wonder uh, why do we consider this Augustine information? It is because that uh, it appeared in, in some context of the constant composition codes. And uh, we study those properties in this paper. And also Milan and Ogawa-san, they show that this sandwich Augustine information actually have, has some operational meaning. It equals to the strong converse exponent for classical quantum channel coding using constant composition codes. So actually this quantity is also very interesting. Okay, so with those expressions, our first result is to prove a one-shot error exponent. So given every input px and the CQ channel, for this, we obtain it, uh, we write this CQ state. We prove that the expected trace distance has this exponential upper bound, where it is E star. The error exponent is defined in terms of the sandwich rainy information. And this error exponent is positive if and only if log m, which is the log of size of the code book, is strictly larger than the mutual information with respect to this CQ state. Okay, here I want to uh, remark that in the classical setting, this uh, sandwich information, uh, this rainy information does have 
have a closed form expression, but for the sandwich one, there is no closed form expression, but uh, uh, we have an optimization algorithm to compute this guy. Uh, this, this is not so easy because uh, it's not just the standard uh, gradient descent with fixed step size because this Rennie divergence has very spatial structure. So we need more uh, method to compute these this functions. Okay, so here, this is an one shot error exponent for uh, rate enough, then it's positive. But what if the rate is not is lower than the mutual information? Then we prove a one shot strong converse uh, we get a row bound by at least one minus four times exponential decay. And this exponent is expressed in terms of the uh, variant of pet's running information. And this exponent is positive if and only if log m is smaller than mutual information. Okay, in the uh, IID asymptotic case where the input distribution is tensor product, then just by the additivity of the sandwich running information and uh, pet's running divergence, then our result directly implies the exponential decay for both regimes for uh, achievable rate region where the rate is larger than mutual information and uh, both sides achievable rate region. I want to remark that uh, those results hold for any finite block length n because we have one shot result and by the additivity of the error exponents, we have any n results. And it also shows that mutual information is the minimum achievable rate and also the strong converse rate. Okay, okay, let's make an illustration here. So this is row B tensor N is the uh, target. Let's assume that it has full support without loss of our generality. And every random uh, channel output uh, is like this. They might not have full support. They, they are eigenvectors and might not uh, commute with row B tensor N. But if we draw en enough samples, then the mixture of them, the channel ID channel output, will converge to our target row B tensor N strongly. Uh, in the sense that uh, the trace distance, the, the trace distance finished in expectation, and the uh, convergence is exponentially fast, and we give an achievable error exponent. Okay, so uh, the same result holds for the constant composition code as well. Here we have this constant composition input and the corresponding output. We show that the expected trace distance also exponentially decays. For every n, and with this error uh, exponents uh, expressed in terms of the sandwich Augustine information, and for the strong converse with Petrani uh, information. But here we have at least polynomial k prefactor. This kp just depends on the support of the input size because we will use some type decomposition. Okay, so uh, we show similar result holds for the constant composition codes as well. Here, I would like to give some remarks. So our one-shot achievability bound uh, recovers the SIE's one-shot bound in the commuting case. And also our one-shot bound implies the asymptotic achievability uh, by Yagli and Kopf. So that's why uh, we believe that our error exponent is actually tight. But we use totally different approaches. Uh, I, uh, that is, we use the complex non-interpolation techniques to prove our result. I will show the result uh, proof later. And also I want to remark that by Jensen's inequality and concavity of lobe, uh, the error exponent using constant composition code is actually larger than that using the random uh, ID random code books. So uh, using constant composition codes actually has some uh, advantages for this other larger than one. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, large diffusion case, meaning that the rate is uh, constant away from mutual information. We obtain the exponential convergence. Then for the moderate diffusion regime, meaning that the rate of the code book approaches the mutual information at the speed of a n, this a n uh, approach to zero, but not faster than one over square root of n. We are, in this case, uh, because we want the rate to be small, as small as possible, the, uh, tending to mutual information. In this case, we also show that the uh, expected trace distance vanish, but sub exponentially for both the running uh, ID running code books and the constant composition code books. Okay, here is an uh, illustration. The x axis is the rate of code book, the y axis is the uh, trace distance. And then we can, because our results one shot, we can evaluate every n shot case. And then when n goes to uh, large, then we, we obtain a large diffusion result, meaning that exponential decay for the achievable rate region and the strong converse region. And uh, we also show the moderate diffusion region when the rate approach the fundamental limit, the, the error also finished. Uh, you may see this uh, figure, uh, <laughs> the similar figure as 
uh, Christoph Trump uh, yesterday, but not that this figure is mirrored to the classical channel coding because he, right now the achievable rate region is the, to the right of the fundamental limit. Whereas the, in the secure channel coding part, the achievable rate is the left part. So this soft covering is kind of dual to a secure channel coding. And this is the contribution of this work, the moderate deviation and large deviation. And in our follow-ups, we also consider small deviation regime where we fix that epsilon error. And then we show that the, the rate converges to the mutual information at a speed of one over square root n. And but we use different techniques because small deviation and large deviation, they are not the same regimes. Okay, so uh, let me quickly go to the proof ideas. Uh, our point is a functional perspective from the non-commutative LP space. So for any operator failure function from some simple space to the uh, bounded operators, we define it L alpha, S alpha known, which we take the S uh, straightened alpha known on the operators, and then we take expectation, uh, raised to the alpha and take expectation. Here, here the probability is just the input distribution in our case and take one over alpha. Okay, but uh, in our code book, we have M code words and they are all random variable. So essentially we have M probability space. So we introduce this map pi N, which is then invading from the original probability space to the M fold probability space because we have M code words. They are, they are identical, they are pairwise independent. So each pi M is an invading to, the, to evaluate it on the Mth probability space. And also we introduce the e up right E, which is a constant value, random value. Then the mixture of them to the E is like a empirical average, uh, the difference between the empirical average to the ensemble average. We denote this as a theta, which is a linear operation acting on the operator value function. We will use this notation to evaluate the components of covering problems. Okay, also note that uh, the composition of SQL channel with the random codes can be viewed as an operator value function from the sample space to the density operator space. So uh, we can express this ex expected trace distance as the L1, S1 known on this linear operation theta acting on the operator value function, which embodies the random codes and also the SQL channel. Okay, so we want to upper bound this guy. Using holders in quality, we can move from the L1 S1 space to the L alpha S alpha space with some uh, uh, sandwich sigma B density operators. And this sigma B can be arbitrary. So it, we can obtain this for free. So uh, we have this L alpha S alpha known on the theta acting on the state. In the end, we want to bound this term. So we bound this term by it, the L alpha S alpha known on the input argument and the operator known of this action. Okay, so let's see this brown part. If we take infima over O sigma B, then this quantity is exactly the exponential to the scale sandwich random information. And this guy can be called as the auxiliary function in, in terms of length, uh, Gallagher's notation. So if we can get a good estimate of the operation, operator norm of this green part, we are done. So for alpha being one, we use tri uh, triangle inequality to get a two, and for alpha being two, we use pairwise independence of the random code books and also the structure of the Hilbert space L2S2 to obtain this one over square root M. Now we have controls of the boundaries. We just interpolate the boundaries to get this, uh, the, the contributions of uh, the size. So we separate the contribution from states uh, of states and also the, the uh, actions, these mixtures to different parts and they both contribute to the error export. Okay, so it's about time. Let me uh, get to con conclusions. We obtained a one shot achievability and strong converse part here. Uh, with, I didn't show the strong converse proof that is in our paper. And for both the random ID and constant composition code books, our techniques is a known interpolation techniques. And I would like to remark that uh, last year, uh, Frederick, uh, you please also use interpolation technique to obtain the exponent for privacy amplification and decoupling in terms of trace distance. Uh, we also use known interpolation, but our proof techniques are slightly different. Okay, so applications include wild type channel coding and all the uh, many covering type problems. And lastly, I want to remark that our result holds for infinite dimension here with space as well, because in the proof, we didn't mention anything about the cardinality or the, the 
dimension of the Hilbert space, so I'll result actually very general. So we only use this known uh, framework. Okay, uh, it's about time. So uh, thank you for your attention and sorry for, for the technical problem. Okay. Uh, 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 thank you for a nice, a nice talk. So uh, uh, Mark, Mark has one question. So yes, please. Uh, thanks for a very interesting talk. Can you go back to the slide where you showed the proof? Yes. With the, uh, this, guy, this slice? This one. Yeah, this is all very interesting. Um, and for the first inequality, you applied Holder's inequality? Exactly. Uh, the, the, what I'm used to seeing is you have um, the upper band is in terms of the, like an alpha norm and a beta norm where one over alpha plus one over beta equals one. So am I missing something? Uh, uh, here, I simplify something. There should be uh, this guy times some another guy, but another guy is just trace, uh, just one because it's, uh, one. Yeah, it's one because uh, here sigma b has to be density. So taking some oh. power of density and taking trace, it's one. Okay, thank so you. Here, I, I simplify something. Thanks for this question. <laughs> sure. So other question. So I have one question and comment. So yes. usually a, you show the uh, several regime. One is the large deviation and the second is the negative deviation. deviation and the third one is the small deviation. Yes. But, but sometimes the small deviation is called uh, central limit regime. Central CLT regime. So uh, and then also uh, small. Uh, no, not small. Uh, moderate deviation case somehow almost uh, no variety. So there is uh, some linear, uh, some exponential linear scale. So the coefficient is only the somehow variance. So this is somehow very simple situation. But in the case of large deviation, uh, we have a more complicated situation. We need to consider something, uh, a kind of uh, redundant transform of uh, Lenny divergence, Lenny quantity. But that kind of Lenny quantity is not unique. There is so many kinds of Lenny quantity. So depending yes. on the problem, we need to find a good uh, Lenny quantity. Yes. So in this sense, this area, has, this regime has uh, much variety. So more interesting topic. And uh, it, how about the small deviation case? Mainly, we have a... a Central limit theorem, so then we have a, a Gaussian distribution. Yes. But uh, yesterday's talk, and my old paper uh, discussed uh, yesterday's Chubb's talk, uh, at that time uh, his result is related to my old result. And uh, in that case, that uh, small, de uh, small deviation regime has a somehow Gaussian distribution. Yes. Oh, no, no, not Gaussian. Not uh, uh, okay, difference Gaussian. between Gaussian. Yeah, different. Yeah. So, did you have some experience found a uh, small deviation case, but the distribution is not Gaussian? That's very interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so I, I do think this quantum soft covering show has a very similar picture as the classical quantum channel coding. And we know we already know the second order asymptotics for, say, uh, for at least classical quantum channel coding. So I, the, in this work, we we obtain the uh, Gaussian as the central in the second order terms. Mm -hmm. As for for which tasks which do not have Gaussian, I would say maybe wild type channels because we have the difference of two terms from the Bob part and also the if part. So, okay, but in the classical case, if we use, we've con we consider multi variate central limit, uh, multi variate variation bound, we can obtain also in, the Gauss, in this Gaussian normal distribution expressions. But if we don't use that, like we only want to consider the, the rate and we want, don't want to use the multivariate variation bound and we will deal with, we, we will have to deal with the difference between two second order terms. One came from the Bob part, the transmission part and one from the if part. So there will be a difference between two, two, two second order terms that's I can, <laughs> okay. So then, yeah. conclusion, uh, the yeah. second order is Gaussian or different distribution? Yes, in that, in wild-type channels. 
Yeah. But in this in this case, we only have the SQL channel, so everything is kind of simple. Everything can be in, 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 in. so we can we only have this fee rule. Okay, so in a model edification, we also have this fee part, this variant info uh variant uh, quantum information variant part here. Yeah. Yeah. We have only one. Okay, so yeah, so they also uh, uh, yeah. Uh, different. Yeah, but for different corpus, they, they, they because we actually have two deep, two different uh, definitions. Uh, sometimes we have two kind of barriers in the case of telephone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like expectation inside or outside the, the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. But in this case, it's basically so you consider a channel and. Uh, uh, so to join the coding in that case, even in the second order, we we don't have Gaussian. We have a slightly different distribution. Uh, in which problems? Channel and the source and the channel join the coding. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. For that, okay, because for source channel coding, we have the contributions from the channel part and also from the side information part. So essentially, we have some of two uh, second order terms. So yeah, yes. It's very similar to the wild type channel coding I just mentioned before, because in the wild channel coding part, we have the difference between two second second older terms. But in the joint source channel coding case, we'll have the sum of two different uh, second older terms, one from the channel part, one from the source part. So yeah, I, I agree in that. So in that case, I, I already have some results. So in that case, we have a different distribution. Yeah, yeah, I, I can. So uh, the state conversion case, we have that kind of different distribution and also uh, joint coding. So channel, uh, source and channel joint coding, we have different distribution. In my yeah, that would be more complicated yeah, because now we have two problem, Usually, uh, we have only Gaussian distribution, very simple. Yeah, yeah, it depends on <laughs> because here we have a door just raw, but in 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 your source channel coding, we have another contribution. We have another state, so we only we have to consider that part, the con the contribution of the second order asymptotics of that part. So that's that will be more complicated. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Dennis. So maybe we have time. So maybe okay. okay, we can talk about this later. This talk. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe next speaker is please please.